Okay, so we've seen that for a camera that uses light, there is a fundamental limit to what angle you can resolve. That angle in radians is roughly speaking the wavelength of the light you're using divided by the diameter of your lens. So what is this limit for a smartphone camera and how does it compare to the limit, which is about 2 by 10 to the minus 4 radians, that we get from the pixel size? Well, once again, using my own smartphone, the Samsung Galaxy S6, the diameter of the lens is a whopping 2.26 millimeters. What wavelength are we working? Well, uh, wavelength of visible light is about half a micrometer, so it's about 5 by 10 to the minus 7 meters. That would be uh, yellow light in the middle of the spectrum. It can go down to about 4 for by 10 to the minus 7 for blue and up to about 7 by 10 to the minus 7 for red, but that's probably a good estimate for current purposes. So our diffraction limit is roughly 5 by 10 to the minus 7 all over 2.26 by 10 to the minus 3, converting from millimetres to metres, which is about 2 by 10 to the minus 4 radians. which is exactly the same as the limit caused by the pixel size. What a coincidence! Well, of course, it's not a coincidence. What this is telling us is that the wave nature of visible light going through a rather small lens is going to spread the light out. So we think of our lens and a light ray going through and landing at a given point on our detector. But in reality, because you've got the waves coming along and they're going to diffract, they will be spread over an area here. And that area is about the same as the size of our pixels. If we made the pixels 10 times smaller, that wouldn't allow us to see 10 times more detail because the light's just going to be spread over 10 pixels each way. So it's not going to tell us any more than we know already. So what that's telling us is that if we made the pixels much smaller than this, we wouldn't see anything. The light would just be smeared over lots and lots of pixels. We'd have a blurry image spread over a lot of pixels. So the pixel size in this camera is about right. It's about equal to the diffraction limit. Um, so it's a good match. Which, of course, assume, means that the engineers at Samsung knew what they were doing, or Sony, as they made this camera. And there's no point in going to like a 100 megapixel camera behind there. You're not going to get 10 times more detail. You're just going to spread your blur over 10 times more pixels. So this is pretty worrying, really. It means that there's no point in trying to make your image quality better by shrinking your pixel size. The only thing you can do is increase the diffraction limit. And that means you either have to make the diameter of your lens bigger or the wavelength smaller. There is no other choice. The pixels, once the pixels are down at about this limit, if the pixels are much bigger than this limit, then there'd be some benefit in making your pixel size smaller. But once they're down at this limit, making them smaller still is not going to help you. It's just dividing the blur between more pixels. Now, if you want to fit your camera into a smartphone, it's going to be very hard to make the diameter much bigger. I mean, you've got to imagine that uh, you've got your smartphone and you've got your lens, which I'm my phone sticks out a bit, and the focal length, and the detector, and that all has to fit inside a phone and behind the screen. Uh, that'll, in principle, I suppose you could make it bigger by having a, uh, a really big lens, but the same focal length. But that's going to be very hard, because you have to focus light at a very steep angle to come into your detector. In practice, it's very hard to have lenses where the focal length is less than about one and a half or two times the diameter. It's just very hard to get the optics to work. Some telescopes get close to having them about the same, but most cameras, it's uh, often the, the focal length is your four or five times the, the diameter. And if you can't do that, that means to make the lens bigger, you have to make the lens stick out of the camera quite a bit more, which is uh, not going to be popular in terms of fitting the phone in your pocket. So really, it's going to be very hard to make the diameter very much bigger and still have something that fits in these ultra-slim phones that people like these days. 
But of course, you can have something like an SLR camera or a giant telescope or a big zoom lens, which is much longer and has a much wider lens. And that is indeed why SLR cameras can get much sharper images and zoom in much more than the sort of system. How about making the wavelength smaller? Well, if you want to work in visible light, that's the wavelength you've got to use. That's what visible, say, yellow light is. I suppose you could take pictures in the ultraviolet. If you were the ultraviolet would have wavelengths of about 3 by 10 to the minus 7, which might give you images that are about twice as sharp. But then who really wants a picture of what something looks like in the ultraviolet? I mean, it's probably of some scientific interest, but that's not what you really want for your holiday snaps and pictures of your friends. So this looks like a tough one. It's going to be really, really impossible, I'd say, to make much sharper images, pick out much more detail in a smartphone camera, simply because of the wave nature of light and the limitation of the size of something you want to fit in your pocket.